Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 11th. It is a beautiful June day here in southeastern Pennsylvania and I got a lot of work to do outside so I'm looking forward to getting out there and uh, weeding and such. So, so I'm back. Uh, didn't have a live stream this Friday because I was traveling. I actually got in Got back into to the house around six o'clock on Friday night, but I was exhausted. Uh, we we uh, left early on. Uh, well, we left about eleven o'clock on Friday morning and drove up from back from Virginia Beach and got in about six o'clock. Pretty much a straight shot. We uh, we stopped a couple of times, you know, gas and bathrooms and things like that. But it was a pretty exhausting trip, and I just knew I wasn't going to be able to be very entertaining on Friday night, so we skipped the live stream. So, I'm back. I'm very happy to be back. In case you hadn't been following the saga, uh, I left on Sunday. We, we kenneled the dog Saturday. We drove on Sunday down to Virginia Beach, and we were there until Friday morning which, when we, we drove back. And... It wasn't just my wife and I, it was uh, my two sister-in-laws and my mother and father-in-law, along with my wife and myself. So, you know, we had a, a fine time. It was, it was nice. It was, you know, it was, it was a family vacation, I suppose. And, uh, but it's been a long time since I've been on one of those. Uh, normally, it's just my wife and I going somewhere. And we typically go to Ocean City, uh, Maryland. We, we used to go to Ocean City, New Jersey, which we like quite a bit. I said before, I grew up in Wildwood, um, New Jersey, back when it was very family friendly, very small and not built up. Now it's, it's, it's changed a lot. It's changed a whole lot. So Ocean City, New Jersey reminds me more of what Wildwood used to be like, and uh, Ocean City, Maryland is a nice compromise because it's got it's got a lot more stuff, uh, which keeps my wife happy, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's, you know, this overdeveloped uh, megapolis of beach, and that's what Virginia Beach is, so I gotta tell you, I'm not, well, first of all, I'm not a fan of beaches. Uh, I find them to be boring. You know, yes, it's pretty to look at. I like the sunrise over the beach. That's nice. But after a day or two, there's just nothing to do, you know, other than sit there and say, oh, the beach is pretty. I don't like sand. I don't, I don't like to go sit on the beach and get sand all over myself. I'm not a big fan of going in the ocean. Um, yeah, so I just sit there and get bored. And Virginia Beach is sort of... I don't like it because it's very built up. It, it's to me, it, it's just this long strip of big hotels, all of which have a restaurant associated with them, and then what they call a boardwalk, but it's actually a sidewalk, or just concrete sidewalk, and then beach. And there's nothing there really. Now, if you go back behind the hotels, there's you know, more of what you might think of in a beach town. You know, lots of little dinky shops and souvenirs and stuff like that. Uh, some some less expensive restaurants, um, but yeah, just, just nothing, nothing floated my boat this week. So we got there and, uh, my, th this trip was really about my, my mom, my mother and father-in-law and, uh, you know, making sure that they had a good time and they're not the easiest people in the world to please. So, you know, we had a, pick our restaurants carefully and my father-in-law's uh, got some disabilities so we had to make sure that we could get his scooter in and stuff like that and um, make sure it had food that he likes because he's very picky. Not picky in the sense of there's a lot of stuff he won't eat. Well, I guess that is true but not in the sense that it's the quality of the food. It's more about, you know, he only likes certain things and he will not try new things. So that was difficult. He's allergic to shellfish. 
So he's not actually allergic to them. He has gout, which is inflamed by shellfish, so he can't eat shellfish. And he wanted soup all week. Well, you're not going to be in a place like Virginia Beach or Ocean City or any beach town and find soup that doesn't have shellfish in it. It's just, that's, they're making chowders and it's going to be crab soup or clam chowder and that's what you get. So he was miserable about that. Yeah. It's a lot of time spent waiting to figure out what was going to happen next. And when that wasn't happening, there was a lot of time spent just enjoying the beach, which I did get one day where I got to sit out on the, the, the balcony and enjoy a couple of pipes and read. And, uh, you know, that, that to me was the best day of the, the whole week. I, I got to be by myself and do something I wanted to do. I'm not very good at doing nothing. I'm not very good at I'm not very good at vacations, to be honest with you. I like, it's not that I like to work. I like to be productive. I like to do things. It doesn't have to be something I'm getting paid to do. So it doesn't, I can take time off from work. But when I take time off from work, I want to be doing something, not just sitting there staring out into infinity at a beach. And uh, yeah, so they left me alone for one day. And that was kind of nice. And then uh, a couple days later, we were supposed to go fishing, and it was actually a very overcast day. Weather was, was not great. I mean, there was one day where it got up to about 80. That was the day they all went to the beach, and I sat on the balcony. Uh, the rest of the time, it was in the 60s, maybe touch 70s, low 70s, uh, overcast a lot of the time. So, you know, not ideal beach weather, regardless. And uh, the, the morning we were going to go fishing, I don't remember which morning it was, uh, perfect day. It's overcast, cool. Um, got up in the morning. There's this fishing pier that I was going to take my father-in-law to. Uh, you know, perfect. He could just roll on out onto it. We could sit down, cast. Uh, I get up at six o'clock. Nobody's awake. Eight o'clock. Let's go get breakfast in the hotel. The breakfast in the hotel was horrible. I'll tell you more about the hotel, but. Uh, then it was like, well, we're not going to go anywhere until 11. And it got to the point where I was just getting really frustrated. And I, cause this was the perfect morning to go fishing. And I don't care what anybody says. You don't catch fish between 11 o'clock and probably six o'clock at night. It just doesn't happen. If you don't go before 11, you're not going to catch fish. And if you want to catch fish after that, you got to go at night. My bias, but it's true. So... 11 o'clock comes and goes, and I blew up. I just, I didn't blow up. I just couldn't take it anymore. Uh, so I left. I, I just went walking. And I walked, and I walked. I walked for about five miles. <laughs> and uh, wound up, I found a, so I, I was kind of in a huff, and I left without a pipe or, or, or lighter, which was brilliant of me. And as I'm walking around, I found uh, something called the Hurricane Vape Shop that had cigars on the door. I thought, well, okay. And I go in, and it's what you would expect. It's all the vaping stuff. Plus, Virginia Beach apparently has a very liberal policy on marijuana, so there's lots of marijuana paraphernalia there. And uh, they have a teeny tiny little humidor. Probably had about 10 cigars in it, 10 different types of cigars, uh, none of which I wanted. But there was a box of uh, Cuban rejects. And I thought, well, I just want a cigar. I'm not going to spend $20 to get an Ashton or you know something I didn't really want. Not that Ashtons are bad. I just wasn't in the mood for it. So I got two of these Cuban rejects, and I asked the and and there's nobody else in the store, and the guy's you know not too pleased that I'm staring at his cigar even or. So he gets yeah, and he has to unlock it. He gets the two cigars out for me, and he's anything else. And I said, yeah, I, I, you have a, a matches. And he said, no, we don't have any matches. I can sell you a lighter. I said, okay, well, just give me a cheap big lighter then. And he reaches in and he says, is black okay? Yeah, black's fine. I wasn't paying attention, so he puts everything together. It's like twenty three dollars for two extremely bad cigars and a big lighter. Okay. So I ask him. Uh, 
you know, I, I don't know. So I, what, what are the smoking laws like here? Can I just walk down the street and, and, and smoke? And I'm holding cigars at this point. And he, he looks at me and says, what, what, you, you mean smoke weed? I said, no, smoke the cigars you just sold me. <laughs> oh, oh, that's no problem. You can smoke those anyway. I suppose so I can walk down the boardwalk with them. They call it the boardwalk. It's not. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You can, you can, you can smoke those anywhere. Nobody will bother you because you can smoke marijuana anywhere. So why would they bother you about that? And I thought, well, you, you haven't been to some of the places I've been to where you can get in trouble, despite the fact that the guy over there is smoking marijuana. Anyway, I said to him. Well, thanks, because I didn't know. I'm from Pennsylvania, and there, the way things are going, I expect that it won't be long before they tell me I can't smoke a cigar in my own backyard. And this guy just lit up at this point. You know, he, he, he found a friend, apparently, because he, he said to me, well, if they want to stop me from doing something in my own house, they better come very heavily armed. I thought, wow. <laughs> I, thought, I know what you mean. And he just opened up, and it was it was fascinating to talk. I talked to him for about 15 minutes. He's an immigrant. Um, I don't know which country he came from. He only referred to it as his country. But he did tell me that he was Jewish. He looked um, Arabic. Um, you know, I would have, if I had to peg him, I would have probably said he was, like, Palestinian or something like that. But uh, he, he said he was Jewish. And I'll tell you why he said that in a moment. And he... He just launched into this whole thing like you know about how when i first came to this country i thought i was coming from a country that had freedom but i had no idea the people in this country do not understand how fortunate they are you have a document called the constitution that you are stepping all over and you should preserve that because it guarantees you the freedoms that i uh couldn't enjoy in my own country and now i, I enjoy here uh, it makes me sick to see what they're trying to do to the Constitution these days. And I thought, boy, this guy is a man after my own heart. And we talked for quite a while. Uh, he he told me, and it, at times it was actually interesting because he was so emotional about this. And he said, you know, I'm Jewish, and I know what it's like to be a Jew outside of the U.S., and I tell you that it's your father and your father's fathers that fought and died so that I'm not a Nazi citizen right now. I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting. I don't know if I would have put it that way exactly, but yeah. Um, so I, I, I thanked him. I, I, you know, I told him I agree with him and uh, you know, basically preaching to the choir. And went off and enjoyed my two cigars, got some coffee. Um, my sister-in-law called me on my cell phone because my wife wasn't talking to me at the time. And it turned out I had walked to a place fairly close to the fishing pier and my father-in-law was finally ready to fish. So I was told to, you know, just hang out there. They'd bring down the fishing. Well, it turned into the whole family fishing, which meant I spent all of my time rigging up rods and getting them cast for them. Got my father-in-law in first, and he held a rod in his hand. He was happy about that. Uh, I I barely fished at all. I, mean, I fished in in name only, and uh, there, there was no chance anybody was going to catch anything. Uh, but they all had fun. My father-in-law, after about five minutes of holding the rod, put the rod down and started riding his scooter around the pier talking to people. He's very friendly. He likes to talk to people. And uh, he spent the rest of, we were probably there for about two hours, just going from person to person and talking to them. Uh, my wife found some people to talk to. Um, my mother-in-law sat there and was cold. Uh, <laughs> and the two sister-in-laws went to gift shops and, and, and got snacks and stuff. So yeah, it was, it was okay. It wasn't a terrible day, but it certainly wasn't the day of fishing I had imagined. And then it was time to pack everything up and get it back in the car and argue about where we were going to go for dinner. So, yeah, that's the kind of week I had. Oh, boy, I was happy to come home. So Friday morning, uh, as predicted, we're checking, you know, checkouts at 11 o'clock. I said, OK, we got all this stuff to load up. Half of it's in my car, half of it's in your sister's car. 
Um, it's all got to go into a truck that they're driving. Uh, plus, we got the scooters to get in there, and one's got a mount on the back and everything. So, let's let's plan to start this around 10 o'clock. No, no, five minutes to 11. We're there, and you know, all the cars are trying to go around us as we're blocking the. Oh boy! So we got everything loaded up, waved goodbye, and left, and uh, drove home. So now the. The one sister-in-law is off on another trip to Cape May, I believe, with a friend of hers. She went back to Pittsburgh and then went back. Uh, the other sister-in-law is taking the parents down to Myrtle Beach to see some friends, and they're doing some sort of tour of the southeastern border. I don't know. I'm just happy to be home. And, uh, yeah, that's where that's where I am. So, I was going to show you pictures and stuff, but I, I didn't really have any good pictures. Uh, Nothing happened. It was really, really boring. I mean, unless you wanted to eat and stare at the ocean, there was nothing going on. I didn't even find any big roosters to take pictures with. It's terribly disappointing. But I had my pipes. I had my balcony. Plenty of coffee. A couple of good books. Um, yeah. So, could have been worse. But it's good to be home. There was a hilarious Uber ride that I'm not going to go into right now, but maybe I'll save that for next week or uh, probably talk about it on the Friday live stream. We did have fun. You know, it, it was there was a lot of laughing. It was it was a good time. It was good to see them. I don't want to make it sound too negative. It was just boring for me. I don't do vacations very well, guys. I got I I don't have the vacation gene. I would have rather been here working on something down here in the shop or doing some gardening or something like that. But yeah, such is life. So back to work tomorrow. Uh, made the mistake of looking at my email, my work email this morning. I've got something like 600 unread emails. So that's nice. That'll keep me busy for a while. I've got an odd meeting dropped on my calendar by someone that I haven't heard from in years, and I worry about it because of their position and my position, not that I'm in any way threatened, but it means that probably somebody in my group has done something they shouldn't have done. So I've got to deal with that. Yeah, but it's good, it's good to be back and uh, looking forward to getting back into the swing of things tomorrow. So this is a bit rambly and, and whiny. Sorry about that, but hey. I don't know what you're going to get when I turn the camera on, so you shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, with that, I'm going to wind things up, finish my haunted bookshop, and go and probably weed the garden for a bit. I hope you're all having a very enjoyable Sunday. Looking forward to a great week again. Week ahead. Week again. Jumping ahead there. I hope you're all having a great Sunday and looking forward to a fantastic week ahead. <laughs> and until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.